Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. I've got my coffee here. We're gearing up to make I think a couple videos today. Um, but I had to start with the new leader Batman Who Laughs. Um, for those of you who have not seen this yet and I wouldn't blame you because the only way you can get it is through the battle pass or through crafting. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I have not done the battle pass yet, but for this month, I really couldn't help myself. And, you know, I like to do free to play stuff that just kind of like an extra little challenge that I kind of enjoy with most like card games, but I really wanted to try all the new stuff. And uh, so, you know, shout out to the team, <laughs> they, uh, the, you know, the devs and the creators and everything. I definitely. Uh, bought this pass and really couldn't resist because there's so many interesting new cards um, and some really powerful stuff as well. Uh, so this is Batman Who Laughs. Um, I think everyone is trying to figure out this leader. And uh, I've got a build today that I feel relatively good about. I think it probably needs some more refining. Um, and I, I, it's not quite as consistent as where I would want it to be. Um, but I think out of all the sort of, I tried like 10 or 12 combinations with this over the last couple of days. Um, just, you know, wanting to find something to put out on YouTube that seemed, um, you know, something I could really genuinely recommend to, uh, the player base who's, who's been following along here. So thank you as always for the likes and subscribes and let me know if you'd like to see more Batman who laughs builds. Um, there are a few that I tried where I was like, okay, I could see where this is going. But I always strive for, you know, what can this deck consistently do? And this leader, because of the chaotic and flurry and this sort of, you know, part of the text, um, is not terribly consistent. That That's kind of my general take on the leader. Um, not going to lie, I think this leader just needs either more support um, or might need, a you know, a spot in the meta when uh, the meta is just not as much Aquaman, Batman, um, and things like Zatanna, Ivy, that can just really go over the top of whatever you're doing. However, that said, I still think the leader's got some potential. Um, and although it's hard to justify playing an anarchy leader that probably isn't the other three, whether that's, uh, you know, Doomsday for obviously those sort of aggro decks, Joker for the burn decks, and Harley for some of the... Uh, other types of aggro decks um he's really fun and really interesting and i think there is there is potential for this leader um i just think right now there isn't a pairing that i really liked enough uh besides the one we'll be talking about today um to really kind of incentivize me to to try him um and it's really interesting you know you get this robin that's a reliable three one that can hit something maybe hit a leader um, honestly, it, it feels really great when you make it and it usually, um, you know, trades for something and that's, that's pretty great. Um, and then you have this sort of upside, right. Of getting flurry and chaotic on something big. Right. And I think that's kind of where everyone started. Um, and you guys will see, you know, some of the thought process behind, uh, the build that we worked on today. So why don't we just hop in, um, excited to get into this, excited to get into some new cards and, um, just see see what these can do. And I've just been loving playing uh, different stuff. So <laughs> we're calling this Summoner. Um, I had also played against this on the ladder, so I think other people are testing it too. Um, and it just caught, you know, I, I had tried, it just caught my eye because I think that Ivy's hidden power has always been, she's a tyranny leader that's consistent, that provides a body on the board that they either need to clear with their leaders or clear with their recruits. And it, it actually just always has a bit more value than you think it does. Um, on top of that, uh, I just think tyranny in general has just gotten a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger, you know, sort of patch by patch. Um, that, that's, and I think it's one of the best uh, factions to address tactics and might uh, specifically. So, I've just been really into running Tyranny in general. Um, and so I tried Lex, and there is a build. So, you know, if you're interested in kind of like a sacrifice-y Lex control build, um, I do think that's a route you can go with this leader, with Batman Who Laughs. Um, but I, I felt pretty good about this build uh, in terms of what it's trying to do. 
And although I think maybe other leader combinations can do it like a little bit better, um, we wanted to see, you know, what Batman Who Laughs could really offer. So we're pretty much just running what I would call like the value Arkham Inmates cards, um, just stuff with good stats or good card advantage. Um, and then you're running all the best Tyranny cards, especially Ivy Plant with, uh, you know, running Poison Ivy Leader, which is probably one of the biggest reasons to be playing Ivy is that Ivy, Ivy's Flytrap is just an excellent, excellent early game card. So you've got uh, Amygdala just as a 3-4 body, right? Comes down, maybe blocks a little bit, maybe it trades with something. Um, you've got the upside that maybe in the late game, the Adrenaline is kind of relevant, but overall it's just a 3-4 body that's reasonable. Uh, Riddler, not much to explain, just a, a good stat line for a bronze card um, that also gets you more card advantage. Send in the Clowns, I was trying out. Honestly, I didn't draw it a lot when I've been playing games, but I still think it's one of those nice cards that can kind of catch you up a bit. Um, and I, I've been testing it in these more like kind of controly uh, anarchy builds. Um, so you tell me what you think. I think the card has... Uh, some potential, but I, I'm still not necessarily convinced that it's that it's super, super important to be playing. Ritual of Sacrifice, I just like as one of. Obviously, we have plenty of bodies to, th to throw at them. Um, Partners in Crime, again, just like a really efficient card. You're getting two, three, one bodies for one bronze pip. Um, Mr. Freeze, probably one of my favorite cards just in general. And I think with uh, the prevalence of Flash Doomsday, this card buys you a lot of value. Um, so I, I would definitely be playing Mr. Freeze if you can afford to. Now, Lord Deathman, one of the new cards. Um, I really cannot wait until there's enough support for like a, maybe it's Joker, I'm not really sure, but like an Anarchy Discard Synergy deck. I loved Madness in Magic the Gathering. Uh, for those of you who, who have played that game and, and, you know, got to see that mechanic. Um, it's just a, it's, it's a cool game plan you get this like inherent value in your deck. Um, and so we're running really Lord Deathman because he's a 2-2 for one bronze pip, which is like obviously not great. But with the upside that when we discard him, he comes back as a 4-4, potentially a 6-6 six, six later on. Um, I don't think there's enough support for Lord Deathman. Um, but I just thought that, you know, this is a bronze recruit that's like, all right, I can just throw it on the board or sacrifice or whatever. Or maybe I keep it in my hand for a little bit of value. So... That's why I'm trying that out. Two-Face, probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, you know, sort of Arkham recruits. We've got one of my favorite packages, Hugo Strange, Ivy Flytrap, and Deimos. Uh, Hugo, just slowing down the leaders. Ivy, slowing down recruits and also drawing you cards. And then Deimos uh, can just do some things that you needed to. Uh, just picking off, you know, one one uh, health shield targets other things like that just i, I i'm always impressed by it by demos um whack man i'm running because i felt like the deck you know obviously you generate a ton of recruits um so just having more cards that can affect the board that aren't recruits seems decent and whack man still hits pretty hard at five indoctrinate i i will say i've been seeing a resurgence of like lobos and some of these like kind of beefier cards, even the seven five guard Frankenstein that got added, um, and it makes me want to play Indoctrinate even more. I still I just think that this card is um, really obnoxious and addresses some of those mid game threats that Control, you know, might actually be scared of, but then has literally a one for one answer and it's perfect. Felix Foss, let's talk about this new card for a second. Um, I like it. I mean, I think obviously it's really easy to set up. There's so many ways, whether it's like. Gotham Riots, Send in the Clowns, all that good stuff where you're just going to play this, it's going to become an 8-8, and then they got to deal with it. Um, so I think Felix is kind of an auto-include whether you're playing Lex or Ivy, honestly. Um, with Batman Who Laughs, it just seems, it's like inherently pretty synergistic. And something, you know, to note here, right, is you can play a recruit the turn you activate Batman Who Laughs. You give the recruit that you want the following turn to have Flurry and Chaotic, Um and then you usually trade your Robin for something, you know, like a little bit of an up trade maybe. Um, and so Felix is just one of those cards that comes down and it's got huge stats. And so Chaotic just doesn't really, it's it's not as much of a drawback, right? Because it's on a big, a huge body that is going to usually be able to punch through whatever it's attacking. 
and actually get the the two attacks off. So Felix, I, I think I've been generally impressed with. Um, Mercy, I go back and forth if I want Mercy or Grid, um, but right now it feels like we're skewing more towards a control meta. Um, I've kind of been saying that for a while. Like, of course, you got Flash Doomsday, um, and some of these, uh, you know, I played against Obi John's uh, Harley Quinn uh, Aquaman deck, which I really like, and that's something I definitely want to build. Um, so the body is obviously weaker, but it really does matter to be able to play, you know, two actions on your turn, um, and Mercy hampers them so they can only play one. Against summoner decks, obviously, it's less impactful because they just don't have to use as many resources. Um, but so far, it's it's still just felt like a fine card. Okay, moving on to sort of the, the end of the deck here. Parasite, uh, I just think that this card is still fine without fire firepower support. I was kind of playing with, do I run a firepower package for some payoffs with Arkham? And I don't think you need to. Um, and I think that, you know, majority of the time you're going to set this up. It comes down as a 5-5. Five, five. You can give this Chaotic and Flurry, you know, hate your opponent for 10 potentially. Um, and I think it, it just does the job that it needs to. We're also going to run to the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Again, we're really much more of a control deck. We're going to be playing actions and not so many recruits because we're already generating a ton of recruits. And I've seen people play the bigger they are more and more and more. And I think that's because it is just one of the more effective ways to deal with some of the most, um, you know, strong kind of mid game cards, right? Anything with four power or less tends to be pretty easily survivable whether that's through the combination of a three powered recruit plus an ability um or like you know just batman in the meta right he can deal three and then deal one damage with his batarang but five power is where we start to get into the the kind of like beefier territory so uh, i think it's been pretty great anton arcane so i'll let you guys on a little secret um, if you want to run a like Lex Batman Who Laughs control deck, this you should have two of this card in your deck. Um, I'm trying to run it as a one of because we don't have so many things to set this up, but obviously we're still just kind of you know we're sending in the clowns. We're um, you know uh, playing all these kind of little small creatures, the plant, the ivy plants, stuff like that. So Anton can be pretty big, um, and it's not hard to get Anton up to six six eight eight stuff like that um, pretty early on into the turns. And then obviously you get a chaotic and flurry and it becomes a lot scarier. Kind of the same reason why we're running Giganta and uh, for the skeleton man that gets bigger when you discard him, that's a little bit of why we're including this. Given Giganta chaotic and flurry is also pretty nice. Um, it's just a huge, huge body that, you know, if it survives and if they're not able to deal with it, then it's going to get two attacks off, which is definitely going to get you some value. And then we get to our gold package, and I kind of did, um, you know, roughly the same thing I would do for any Tyranny deck, but we've got a little bit of a change here. Um, so we've got Lex Luthor, big health pool, card advantage, no-brainer, dark side, recently got to craft this guy because I'm so close to a full collection, um, and I was super psyched because obviously he's just always been one of the strongest, um, you know, Tyranny recruits. Um, I'll skip Carapax for a second. Brainiac got buffed from a 5-5 five five to a 6-7. Definitely makes a pretty big difference. 6-7 is pretty hefty. Um, and just the fact that he he draws a card, uh, you know, at the end of your turn, and then you'll draw a card when he dies, definitely seems worth including. Appetite for Conquest. I was also anticipating playing against ba more Batman Who Laughs, um, and I like playing Appetite when I have Batman Who Laughs because I think Robin's a 4-2 hunter. Um, so I really wanted to play two of this card because I think one... Makes the game really hard for your opponent to kind of shuts the entire game down, um, especially with the amount of fruits you have. And then we have the addition of Carapax. And maybe I should be running two for a control deck. Maybe that makes more sense. But I really wanted to make the deck as kind of streamlined as possible. So I don't think there's any game where I would want to draw two Carapax. Uh, for the most part, I just want to have one. Why are we running Carapax? Because of Batman who laughs, right? Um, because although he can't protect, he's a 6-3 invincible. And so you can just send him in with Chaotic and Flurry. It doesn't matter what he's punching. Um, it's going to be great for you. Um, now, of course, you play into Batman. Not great matchup for him because he can just tear gas this thing and then it's basically completely useless. Um, but non-Batman matchups, especially in, uh, in control matchups, uh, they don't really have a way to deal with Carapax, right? Uh, aside from maybe like 
conquest to, to shrink it down a little bit, something like that. Um, so we're trying them out. And I will, I will shout out, although I haven't really played with it as much yet, um, All Hallows' Eve also love the art for this card. And then I think this is the one of the new blue uh, gold recruits in the background, which is kind of cool. Um, I, I hope there is some cool, like, control reanimation kind of deck that we can see in the future. And maybe this card is still good enough, right? You're getting two, it's two for one, you're getting two recruits, right? They get speed and then they get sacrificed. Maybe this is, is good enough, you know, when you're running Anton and stuff like that. Because it'll summon and get that trigger. Um, so All Hallows Eve, I would keep our eyes on this. This, this card may be something that mid-range or control tyranny decks actually look into at some point. But I, I just really couldn't justify it over some of the amazing tyranny cards we already have. Um, so, why don't we fire up at least a couple games so you guys can kind of see, uh, you know, sort of how the deck plays um but definitely if you have access to batman who laughs have fun i would test a bunch of stuff i've seen like batman who laughs flash with wonder woman i think blade was talking about that and i played against combat panda last night running it um there are there are a bunch of people out there testing builds which is really fun okay we're playing against one of those Batman Who Last Decks, which uh, I've heard about and sort of been wanting to try. Okay. Um, put back the Mercy and Lord Death, because we don't really have any... We don't have Gigantic in our hand to incentivize that. Okay. Riddler's not bad to start with. So we'll see who's Batman Who Laughs. This little left laughing last. Nice. Right, so we've got our Deimos. Love a Deimos. And I've, I've liked this concept, right? Like, you're getting recruits, you get to buff them with Wonder Woman, you have a combat-based leader that can kind of affect the board earlier. Also, this is kind of cool art. I like that. Gentleman Ghost, I think, is pretty cool with that as well. So I've been thinking about trying that. Okay. Well, we can just fill the board here, which I think is probably what we want to do. Um, question is, do I want to stick Riddler in the back? Probably at this point. Um, we also don't have to make an Ivy plant here because we don't really have a great way of uh, avoiding the uh, Wonder Woman. Um, so actually, I think I'm okay with, with holding the activation. Let's we'll attack Wonder Woman. I think I'd rather try and put damage on Wonder Woman first. our card from Riddler. Got a pretty gold heavy hand, unfortunately. Okay, Brick is fine. Can maybe just put him in front here. Uh, good old Lobos. Definitely seen more of him, or Lobo. I've seen more of him a lot lately. I imagine we're taking two. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see what we can do. So here we can try and get damage with the amygdala. And then we can send in the clowns potentially. Hmm. So that's fine. Five and four. Or we send in the clowns. Double attack Robin. Give this chaotic. Yeah, that's that's actually probably. As much as I want to rush things down, I, I think I do need to kill Lobo because it is going to be a, a huge problem. So we do have to sink some resources into this, unfortunately. Um, and then I guess we can activate Ivy now. We'll trade with the Robin recruit. Um, 
The most gold heavy hands. Wait. Is that how that works? I thought it couldn't be attacked. Does Chaotic just work through that? Okay. I mean, that's good for us, but not what I expected. Maybe that's a bug. <laughs> not, not convinced that that's intended. Because it says it can't, it can't protect, and I think it says it can't be attacked. Wow, they really... Okay. Well, that was a weird game. Uh, I think that was a bug, and I guess maybe they had an awkward hand. So, not not the greatest display of, uh, <laughs> of this deck or that matchup, but... Um, I guess at least you can see, kind of like, you can make a lot of recruits and stuff like that. Um, which you can try and take advantage of. I, I really think that Batman Who Laughs lends itself more to control than it does aggro. I mean, I, I, I'm still toying with my, my Harley build of it, um, which I may throw up on the channel. But I think that it just makes more sense to just have some, like, sweepers and, you know, these cards that create recruits and then just slap the, you know, flurry on something massive later on, like like Felix. Um, just kind of why I think Lex originally was my favorite combination, but it just didn't feel terribly consistent, whereas I think Ivy does help affect the board a bit more. Um, and obviously has Ivy Plant, which I think helps with the deck wanting more card advantage. So, you know, it's it's all about just trying to figure it out. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, most I like. I think Parasite's probably going to be pretty good. Ship these back. Oh, nothing to Deimos. I'm not going to run it out uh, just because I don't think we'll be too, too pressured and... If I know Joker builds, they're going to have plenty of X1s that we can kill with Deimos. Okay, that's fine. We can actually just go Deimos, whack a man, and kill the Ivy Plant. I think that's pretty good. Alright, well we've got Parasite next turn. Anton is kind of awkward here, but... And may may not be worth a slot in the deck. That's I don't love drawing things that are <laughs> that are not useful. Okay. Arkham Tunnel or Escape Tunnel. Oh, that's not bad. Can I draw a bronze? Okay. Yeah, so I can't hit hidden. But I think Sin of the Clown still counts it. Is that right? It does. Okay. So we can do this. And then... Oh, but I also kind of want to play Parasite next turn. So you know what? Let's just trade these. And then... We're gonna go for Joker. Could play Anton out as a three-three, but that feels pretty mediocre. This is fine. Yeah, touch shot and punchline. All right. Well, the shots are gonna hurt. No two ways about it. Okay, it all went face, which honestly I can, I can sort of live with here. Okay. Well, again, we kind of have the same issue. Um, I 
I kind of want to save sending the clowns for when they have like an Arkham Inmate turn. But also we could put it on a Anton. But then she can just kill Anton next turn. So... Yeah, let's just, let's just do this. This is fine, I think. This. Let's see, Parasite. And then... Oh, right, this is hidden, so I can hit it. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, so, sure, let's get... The most chaotic. Yeah, let's let's trade here, and then try and go for Joker. Okay, we actually hit all of our attacks. We've got we've got Anton plus Appetite, or maybe Anton with Dark Side next turn. I mean, I like our spot. Okay, I like that less. Okay, it's just Clayface. That's fine. That, that I can deal with. Yeah, I figured the clown is probably dead. Okay. Well, I think I think Appetite does a little too much work here. And we get to fill our board. So, let's definitely just fire that off. Also, that just really hampers the Joker deck anyway. So, that's pretty nice for us. Yep. Um, well, let's... Uh, we have a shot at killing Joker here, so I think we should take it. Oh, didn't hit, unfortunately. Um, do I want to clear Ivy Plant? Yeah, probably. Gets enough value that I probably would rather clear it. Alright, then let's just play a big Anton. Um... And make a plan. Alright. Well, in this situation, Anton then <laughs> becomes massive. I do think that part of the key to a Batman Who Laughs deck that's going to be effective is utilizing Anton Arcane. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got this. Okay, well, these games are kind of weird because <laughs> I felt like uh, they, were, they were sort of one-sided. Um, and this build is, is it's far from, you know, the perfect Batman Who Laughs build. But I, I still, I'm still tinkering with this kind of like more control focused. Um, here, I'll go to the deck while we close out the video. Um, this sort of like control oriented okay, then you drop something big and put Flurry on it, right? And you've got maybe some sweepers and stuff like that. So that's kind of why I think, you know, a card like... Um, so Felix obviously lends itself well to this kind of strategy, and so does Anton. Um, and I think Anton's pretty easy to enable these days. People know to try and, you know, build up their boards in an efficient way. Um, you've got Send in the Clowns, you've got Gotham Riots. Um, we're not running Gotham Riots because I... I Felt like it was maybe not necessary, but the more I feel like I'm playing this deck, it's like you play the utility anarchy cards, um, you play some like maybe anarchy uh, removal, right, with whack -a man with the bigger they are, with Parasite, um, and then you just play all like all of the stock good um, tyranny control, like tempo based cards, and then the t and then the top end for it and maybe that even includes massacre maybe you just do need that for um the matchup against uh aquabat um but i i would encourage you trying ivy over lex i think lex has some really cool synergies with this kind of strategy but i think ivy just offers a little bit more um to make the deck a little bit more consistent and less likely to get rolled over by aggressive and some of the better mid-range strategies so uh that's our, our summer deck definitely check it out um let me know what you think in the comments uh as always and let me know if you'd like to see more batman who laughs it's a really interesting and fun leader um like i said think he needs a little bit more help think we're not quite in a place in the meta where uh he can maybe really shine 
um, but a really interesting like addition to the leader pool um, and quite a lot of fun. So uh, thanks so much, and uh, you'll be seeing some more videos hopefully soon this week. Bye-bye.